up, Isaiah 53, verse 4 to 6, says, Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds, we are healed. Profound, amazing. He knew that his brokenness would give us wholeness. He knew that. See, an empty tomb, friends, his end would be our beginning. So we, what we perceived as a painful breaking actually becomes for us a brand new awakening. So Jesus pursued the pain, friends. That's what he did. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross. Let's look at that in context of the scripture that it's from. So that's from Hebrews 12. Verse 1 to 3, it says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, who are those witnesses? It says, therefore, we need to know what it's there for. Well, verse, chapter 11 spoke about the, the, the great famous saints of faith and what they'd accomplished and all their major feats and who they were. So they're a part of the great cloud of witnesses. And so too are those who have fallen asleep, those who have passed away. Since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame. And he wasn't a big deal. He didn't have his game face on making a big noise, but he scorned its shame, uh, 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 scorned its shame, but going like a sheep to the shearer without a word, humbly, submissive, with the most beautiful attitude. And sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners. He was dying on behalf of sinners and he's getting the opposition and getting flack from the very people he's about to shed his blood for so that you will not grow weary or lose heart. See, he was getting opposition. That makes me think about the fact that when he's rejected, he was rejected so that we could be accepted. Friends, remember that when your teenager is giving you lip. When your spouse is being a little bit offish with you or a bit blunt and not being as loving and as caring as they could be. Or when your boss isn't, isn't acknowledging you in the way that you think that you should be acknowledged. Jesus bore the brunt of full rejection for the sake of our acceptance. So then we can stand as sons and daughters and go, I am accepted in the beloved and I can love beyond myself. Regardless of whatever rejection, I can continue to pursue the pain I don't have to turn my back and be nasty back. There's no tit for tat. There's none of that. I can love. I'm going to pursue the pain because that's what Jesus did. I'm going to love despite that rejection.